brothers and sisters. There's been many a squeaky noise going around in the news network keeping us pasted. And those who learn to make up words from fast and brilliant men. So I don't know myself what squeaky means, but I feel squeaky now. We want to give God all the glory and all the honor. And the fact that the losers are as sinners. Secondly, I would like to ask permission from the conference secretary to proceed with the Pastor Sarah. May I offer the the the, the full forgiveness of all who's been sin. And you have graced us with your presence here today. And with your permission, I would like if I can continue or I can sit down and be blessed. And also for the fact that uh, Steenberg has become one of my favorite churches. There is no other church that is like you. Amen. That is now really from the bottom of my heart. Always when I come here and tell my wife, my son, I'm going to the church where they sit from the bottom. Thank you very much. That in itself is my blessing to me. So I can just call the pastor up now to conclude with the sermon and pray, and then I can go home because I've got my blessing. It is also good to see familiar faces. Sister Grace, you were there like us the other day, preaching. And I lifted your hands up to the Lord that we can see you. I know that the Lord has a special message for us all here today. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are before you now. Come and speak to us. Also speak to me, Lord. Let us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I go into this message, which is entitled, We Are No Longer Slaves to Fear. I want the church to know that Satan is a busy, busy person. Oh, yes. Last night, Whilst I was just lying in bed and about to sleep, his first attempt to prevent me of coming here to give you this message was to choke me. <laughs> yes, he choked me. I was about to sleep. And as I closed my eyes, I, you know when you're about to sleep, you get tired, you get drowsy, and you, you go into that, that unknown world. I could feel I couldn't breathe. It is, a, it is as if something was choking me and uh, I, I, I reached out to my wife next to me and she was just sleeping peacefully and I couldn't breathe. And I said to myself, let us stand up and then when you are up, maybe things will be better. I thought I was going to die last night. It was a fearful experience brothers and sisters. I was really scared. I'm honest with you. I went to the bathroom and I walked in the, to the kitchen and I walked up and down. I even made some physical exercises to just get back to normal and then eventually the breathing came back to me. I don't have asthma or any other illnesses and things like that but it was an experience that really stood Pray to God, and I went to sleep peacefully until this morning. Yeah. When my wife came to me now, awake now, leaving me in my moment of, of, of anguish last night, because I reached out to her pastor. She kept on sleep. The very first thing this morning my wife did was to give me a glass bottle and say, I need for you to open this. And Satan had his second plan of action to deter me from bringing this message which is entitled, We are no longer slaves to fear. As I opened the bottle, the bottle fell and it cut me so deep that the leaking couldn't stop. I 
That's why you see me with a, with a, a man-made plaster here, cello tape, and tissue. Because we couldn't find plasters in the house. The medical aid, aid, uh, aid uh, box that we had, there was nothing. I asked myself, Lord, what is going on? What is going on? Why should I not go to steam? And the Lord says, don't worry, my son. These are just words to distract. Go and tell my people the message that I have laid upon your heart. Brothers and sisters, the Bible in 1 Timothy 1, 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. And the focus of our message this morning will be about fear, how to deal with this world called fear. Because many of us sitting here this morning, we make ourselves guilty of becoming enslaved or become slaves of fear. Although we have the truth, although we have Jesus, although we have the victory, yet sometimes we find ourselves caught as a slave. This fear thing that is going around. A book that I'm currently reading is entitled Knowing God's Secrets. It's a very interesting book because when I read this book, I said to myself, let me share this with the church of Steamburg. Knowing God's secrets, writer John Hunter, he made a statement and he says, medical science now recognizes that between 60 and 90% of our sicknesses, I want to check, 60 to 90% of our sicknesses, it is caused by emotions such as He continues by saying that also sorrow, envy, resentment, hatred, these emotions is what's causing us to be sick. To be sick. In this week at the office, we received three notifications on the evening. And when I opened the one notification, I saw about the person who is being declared dead now in this notification is someone I work with very closely. A young man got into a party, drove on fatal power, had a head on collision with someone, and he died on the spot. When the sort of emotion came into me, immediately I started to hear. Hey. And I started to feel sick. I started to feel I don't want to be in the office anymore now. Because the news of this event has created the sorrow in me and the sadness that made me literally sick, brothers and sisters. I can speak about fear. Last night, when I heard and I could not breathe, I started to panic because now there is this fear emotion in me. Point of the matter I want to bring across this morning, brothers and sisters. It says that I don't know this writer John Hunter, what is the source of his figures. But what I want to say to the church here this morning. It's even close to it, it's even close to accurate. We as God's children, we need to learn how to deal with our emotions. Once we control our emotions, once we deal with our feelings, there's no need for us to be sick. Because if we can't control that, Satan then makes us slaves of that emotion that we are experiencing. And as believers today, we need to learn how to free ourselves from the slavery of our emotions. And those emotions is fear, worry, depression, bitterness, anger, stress, loneliness, and sometimes even 
even guilt. These emotions, it is what's enslaving us to Satan. And the Lord said to me, when the call came last month, and the other contacted me, the Lord says, now you go and tell them there in Stephen, I, God, wants to free them from whatever they are enslaved to. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you won't know, but there is someone seated here this morning that has a problem. There is someone seated here, we see the smiles, we see the beautiful dresses, we see everything looks good, but deep underneath, people are caught into problems. Depression is no joke. And as a policeman, I stand many a times in front of bodies with my camera as a forensic expert, and then I must photograph or capture this image, and then when you see the note, or we ask and inquire, we realize this person has been enslaved to an emotion such as depression, such as worry, such as fear. And ultimately, they don't know what is the way out. And the only way out Satan can point in their brains is to say, you don't need to live anymore. This is 2023, and this is the reality that we are living in, in 2023, brothers and sisters. I like to cater for the little ones sometimes. When I was taught to preach by Pastor Emerson Cornelius, no man, you know Pastor Emerson? And he said to me, Sir, I'm sick here. Let me teach you, you must be like Jesus. Be simple in what you say. Don't complicate things. Sometimes, when an English word is too high for me, I, I uncomplicate it. I just say it the way it is, a direct translation to Afrikaans. A little boy and his mommy and his daddy lives in a house. There is a severe thunderstorm and there is lightning and there is flashes and it is storming and it is scary out there, brothers and sisters. And in their little home, it is cozy and warm. And mommy, Mrs. Judith, decided it's time now to tuck this little boy in. And she took him to his room, tuck him in, put the comforter there, the blanket there, and say prayer and stories. And says, my little boy, it's time to go to bed now. And he says, mommy, are you for real? Can't you see what's going on, happening outside here? The thunders, and the flashes, and the storm, and I'm scared. I think mommy must stay tonight here for me. Mommy says to this little boy, I'm a boy. Mommy can't stay with you all night. Mommy has to go to the daddy's room. Because mommy stayed by the daddy's room. And so, you will be okay here. And as the boy requested from his mommy to stay with him for the night because of the scariness that's happening around him, he says to his mother, I can't, if I, if, if the mother said to him, I can't, I'm asleep in daddy's room. And then in a soft, silent word, he says to his mother, the shaky voice, Mommy, I think daddy is a big sissy to be needs you. <laughs> I'm asleep alone here. And you must be with him to come for him there. He's a big sissy man. Brothers and sisters, fear, it is a reality. It is a reality. And I tell you, we need to deal with this. At some point in our lives, we all have experienced fear. From the cradle to the grave, fear is fast. It's blissful, baleful shadow. And today, God wants me to speak to you about fear. How to get ourselves away from fear. I like what Ellen White says in the book uh, Education. She says that the body must be in a healthy condition. Alright? The body must be in a healthy condition. Because it needs for its machinery to be to act harmoniously. She said that. She continues by saying, brothers and sisters, that if our bodies is in good, healthy shape and condition, we'll be able to worship God in a manner that is unbecoming. Amen. I'm paraphrasing this because 
But when we stress, when we worry, when we fear, when all these emotions are there, it casts a damper on our worship with God. And it kind of articulates the idea is that right It's trying to create the impression now that it's holding us back from being free when we must serve God and others and sisters. We need to be free when we serve God. We must be free. Otherwise, there will be a problem. The Bible is very clear there in 2 Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. It is just a spirit of fear. We need not worry about nothing when we have Jesus in our lives. Whatever situation comes your way, whatever challenge you might be facing, I tell you today, brothers and sisters, with Jesus in the vessel, with Jesus in the boat, we need not worry because he's the one that will fight the battle for you and for me. I can ask anyone now, is everything okay? And some of you will say yes, knowing that there is some things that is not okay. Mm. Leave it at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And don't need to worry. Now the question I want to ask the church this morning is, what does the Bible say about fear? Mm. So today, the leaders, when everyone leaves here, when you sit with a lunch table and eat your gluten, you will discuss and you will remember fear, the word fear forever. Mm. What does the Bible say? about fear. Let's first look at what the Bible says. If you turn the me in the Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 30. I want to church. What does the Bible say about fear? Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 30. I will just read the part that is relevant. It's on the screen. For God has not given us what church? The spirit of fear. But of power, that's not. But of power. Amen. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And we need to serve God in spite of the circumstances that we are in. Amen. We are commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 6 to serve God. We are commanded, you know what the command is? Now you must know that me, if you see me in my work entitlement or where I work, uh, I'm a colonel there, you know? You have these little castles and things on your shoulders. If I go down the aisle, I just walk past the aisle, my uh, uh, brother. I walk and people come, they go stay at my dish. If I have a cap on my head, they will salute me. So I command from them, because of the rank, I command that they do that. It is, it, is, it, is, it is the way it is. So when God says, I command you to serve me, God is not compromising, brothers and sisters. Don't tell God that I'm worried, I'm fearful, I'm scared. God says, you need to serve me as your creator. Amen. It's not from my tongue that I'm sucking this. It is from the holy word of the Lord. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and thou shalt serve him and him alone. Amen. I wonder, at some point, when the army will march in here, I wonder, at some point, when the police will march in here and question us as to why are you here on a Saturday and instead of a Sunday? Will we stand brave and says the Lord, is commanding me to worship him on this holy day or are we going to compromise? Amen. I did this the other day in the church and I asked the question. And this is just to calm my nerves. When COVID-19 came, so many people succumbed to the world's laws when they instructed that those, everyone must be inserted for this, what do you call this thing again? Vaccine. It's a vaccine thing, yes. I tell the church, brothers and sisters, how many, I want to expose you now. I love this church too much. I might not come back in the next three years, past. they only invite me. I want to ask the question, who had themselves vaccined? Because the government says so. I love the church. The point I want to make is this. We need to fear God more than we fear the world. Amen. Even if they say so, we ask God, what do you want God from me? Yeah. And hence, I'm saying to the church this morning, we need to fear the Lord and serve yeah. Him. Amen. 
We are commanded to fear God. We are commanded to serve Him. We are to fear His wrath of sin if we do not accept His free gift of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. But if we have been saved, we have a natural fear of disappointing our wonderful, loving Father. That's where we no longer, that is, we no longer afraid of Him, but we fear hurting our loving Father. Let me make this and, and, and make an example of what I'm saying. Disappointment is something that is a true reality. Mm -hmm. Simon Lincoln is here this morning. I don't know why. As of later, Mr. Baikish, he goes with me whenever I have a preaching appointment. I don't know why. And then later on, when he will go home or he will sit around the table, he will, he will, will scrutinize whatever I say. I don't know if you have a critic like this in your life, but me, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, she's on my first mother tongue, so, so all the vocabulary and the, the nouns and the verbs is been looked upon, Pastor. The point I want to make this morning, our youngsters must learn from us as their examples. Amen. So disappointment is something that we need to address young people in today's day and age. So this young girl was peer pressured by her friends to go out with her one evening on a Friday evening. Seven day bent this young girl. She had to go out with her friends. And as she went out with them, her brothers and sisters, where they went to was something that she was not supposed to be. So be it, she was there now. But now Satan just wants you there first. It is not true. Yeah. He wants to alienate you so that you can be alone, away from the foe, so that he can come with his plan to get you and take you away from the presence of God. So this young girl was in this nightclub with her friends. They said to her, listen here, here's a little pot for a cigarette. And then she declined, she said, no, no thank you, I don't do this. Then after that attempt, Satan came the other way around and she asked, the friends asked her, are you not thirsty? And she said, no, I'm fine. And they offered her something to drink, something strong. Thanks to God, the young lady did not succumb to these pressures. And the one thing that I like about reading here, when they try to, 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 to help her participate in these things, they ask her, what's wrong with you? Why don't you want to enjoy yourself? And she said to them, to her friends, you know what? I'm afraid my parents will find out and when my parents found out what I've done here tonight, I will disappoint them. You see, brothers and sisters, disappointment is a reality. And when you look at the relationship we have with God, on the day we went to the baptism in front, on the day when we accepted Jesus as our personal Savior, we made a commitment. We said, Lord, I will accept thee as my personal Savior. God expects from us as his children to honor our commitment. Amen. Amen. Our commitment. And so, today, that is, that is how it is with believers. We studied a very beautiful lesson this quarter. You know the chapter in Revelation about, about the, 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 what do you call it? The second? The three angels message, Revelation chapter 14, 14, verse 6 and 7. There's a beautiful verse that I want to bring across this morning, church. It says there in the following, Fear God and give Him glory. For the hour of His judgment is come. Worship Him that made heaven and earth. It continues, and the sea and the fountains, the waters. What is the point I want to make? Even John the Revelator is bringing across to the children of Stephen this morning. We should always fear God. Now this, brothers and sisters, is what I deem to call the holy fear. Amen. So the Bible speaks about a holy fear this morning. When we listen to these verses, and what I'm quoting here, I want you to understand that God wants us to know that we belong to Him. And we need to fear God. God more than mankind. <laughs> the second fear I want to speak to the church about is healthy fears. Now I've addressed the holy fears part with you now. 
God according to the word of the Lord. We must fear God and serve Him. We know that there's going to come a day when the eastern skies will burst open. And those that was not adhering to God's word, those wicked ones, they will not be with us when we meet Jesus in, in the air. Are you with me, children? Those that is not committed to Christ, they will run to Table Mountain and say, Hide us from His face because we never fear God. We just did our own thing. In God's eyes, in our eyes, God in His own might and power never existed. The only thing that existed in our lives was me. I, I don't care about the Lord. Hmm. We must have a holy fear for the Lord. Amen. Let's speak about the ugly fear. I created and I stole the statement from the American president at some point when he made a statement during the Great Depression. <coughs> if you read history, history, I love history. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Roosevelt during the Great Depression, he made a statement during that time when everything in the United States was just dark and they had no future and it seems to us the bits and the, the not using the dollar anymore in 2023 and not buying versus of every person, China and Russia and the, the European countries as well. It, it seems to me that there is this big battle about to, to start soon. Where the money you be having won't have any value to us. And this is what this president made and said to his, to his, to his to the American people at the time. It's very important that you listen to what he says. He said that the only thing we have to fear during that Great Depression was fear itself. Mm. If you start why of you are fearful of something, you are, you should be concerned about the fact that you are fearful. Because fear is grabbing a hold of you. That emotion is enslaving you now. But that sounds good. But there's one thing wrong about that statement. And you know what this but, but, but the wrongest is of that statement? It is not true, brothers and sisters. We need not to fear for nothing. Great depression, rich, Ramaphosa, it doesn't matter. If we have Jesus in our lives, Thank Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 10 and yeah. verse 28, and he stated, Fear not them which kill the body. Amen. I will be judged. Fear not them. So, whatever happens around us, Jesus says, Fear not them. That kills the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. That is the kind of God that we are serving this morning, brothers and sisters. Instead of fearing whatever is happening around us, let us know that God is the one that we need to respect and honor and fear. Amen. In addition to this, there is always that certain normal fears that we need to survive in life. As long as there are these things in life, it is natural, it is normal to have fear in your body. So I'm not saying to the church, just don't, there must be no fear. Personally, me, I believe in my heart that the sea was made for the fishes and the whales. And the turtles, and the, and, the, and, the, and the sea snakes, and all the animals that love me. God gave me legs and two legs to walk on solid ground. Amen. You'll never find Frankie swimming in the sea. Mm. Because I believe God did not make that for me. Mm. So I have a natural fear of not, I can swim. Don't misunderstand Jesus the Jewish, and I can swim good.
I won't come for you because I'm going to drown myself. And then I'll say a prayer to Jesus, Lord, thank you that I'm a human being and not a fish. Get away from the sea. Let those that must love you there love there. It's a normal fear to not be in some place where you are not Jewish. Let me speak about rattlesnakes. I can't understand. And I'm not a racist this morning. Have you seen how people just love to catch these snakes? Put them around their necks. And, and, and handle these things. Uh, we were in Durban on holiday, me and my wife, and there's a little snake thingy there. When you walk on that, these guys with the car, they, they carry you, you know, they never they carry you there. Uh, you sit on the ride, and when you go to that side of the, there's a little snake thing there. So my wife said to me, I don't know why, why, why feel like that. Let's go in by the snake world. <laughs> I said, Lucy, do you like snakes? Just the morning, you must ask her, well, what's up tonight? She said, no, we just want to look. I said, you can go in there. I don't believe snakes is normal. I think they can bite you or put you, and you can get so. And what if the venom is, 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 is dangerous to kill you? So why must I go there? There are people who have a natural fear for snakes. There's a natural fear for the sea. There are a natural fear for poisonous spiders, for scorpions, for electricity. Hey, I don't see myself. It, it, <laughs> the other day, the light struck an old I don't know. She said, go look for what? But why is it not working? I could see one switch was off there by the by that big board thing. But I'm thinking, what if I touch that? I still want to come and preach here by Steve Will today. <laughs> what if I touch this? What if those electric voltage goes through my body and charm me and burn me? How are you gonna get this message today? I said, Lucy, you have a problem with electric switch. You switch <laughs> I have a problem with electricity. I need to respect it because it can take my life away from me. Those that is a specialist in that field, they know they put rubber gas on, they protect themselves, they put all the things that is necessary on when they deal with the situation. I lost a friend the other day, a bone technician. You know what he did was? We got a call in Kailicha. There's an ATM bombing. These guys ripped the ATM bombing, uh, the ATM open for the money. But with explosives, it is not always that all those explosives has detonated. Some of them as piece by piece, and one wire which was not detonated was lying there. You know what happened, brothers and sisters? He did not see it. So as he walked with his jumpsuit towards the, 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 the core center east of the explosion, he accidentally stepped on it, and it ripped his leg of his body. Hmm. Now a technician would know, a bomb technician, you respect explosives. You deal with them in a way that don't take things for granted. Yeah. You must know that that thing might take your life away from you. So a healthy fear is what we're talking about here. It's natural and it is normal for thinking not to like to swim in the sea. It's a healthy fear. Hmm. Brothers and sisters, it says here in our reading that a smart electrician had better have a healthy fear for electricity if he's going to make it home to suffer. An explosive expert, he had better have a fear for explosive if he wants to see another birthday. And as parents this morning, I want to employ you, I want to say to you, we teach our children to have a fear of certain things in the house and home. If the little one crawls to the three-point club and he puts his finger in there, what do we do? We reprimand him. If a little one goes to the stone, and the blood is the blood is is red. We say to him, don't put your hand there, you're gonna burn. And sometimes we say to them, okay, you don't wanna listen? Feel. Here's a church. Feel. So that you can learn in the in the manner that you're supposed to learn. So brothers and sisters, we need to understand that to have these kind of fears, it is okay. And just as we respect those instances, we need to know that God is demanding from us, fear me and serve me. Amen. That is what we ought to understand. 
Now besides healthy fears, besides the holy fears, we also get what we call the last fear, and then the record is almost done. I want to bring across to the church, sometimes we get those hurtful fears. Hmm. Hurtful fears. It's three H's. It's the holy fear. It's the healthy fears that we must have. And lastly, I want to address hurtful fears. Hurtful fears is defined within the verse that we have found in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. This is the hurtful part in terms of fears. And the Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's the fear of the Lord. And then there are the second fear, which is our natural fears. What is hurtful this morning, church, is what Paul described in that verse as a spirit of fear. It is a spirit of fear. And this is where the hurtfulness comes in. When fear controls us, listen to me, church. When fear controls us, instead of us controlling our fears, that is when it becomes something that is hurtful. Because what happens now, where God demands from us, you know what, we are enslaved by fear, and then now we start hurting those ones. First of all, God who loves us, whom we're supposed to love, we start hurting those ones, which is our partners, our, our wives and children, because we are caught up in that spirit of fear. Because it's not from God. He has never given us a spirit of fear. Amen. I hope it's a, yeah. We should never be afraid of nothing. Mm. Let's not let fear catch us. We should not be bonded with fear. The spirit of fear is when we allow ourselves not to trust in God. I love the church. We don't allow ourselves to trust God because we want to depend on our own strength. Yes. We want to depend on the amount of money that's in our accounts. We want to depend on worldly things, in other words, and then we put God aside in that walk with Christ. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You know what's the cousin of fear? Why? I said, my wife, I was telling you the other day, you two come and collect it. You never worry. You, you, I just lay in my bed there. I said, Lord, it's not my problem. It's yours. And I do that literally, brothers and sisters. I do it literally. I said, Lord, you said to me, if you accept me as your personal savior, I make this a reality, brothers and sisters. Too many a Christian nowadays goes through depression and through worries and through stresses and through things which is unnecessary. Unnecessary. Then we become sick, we end up in the hospital, and at the end of it all, we lose our lives because we don't trust enough in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. By the way, the song I played you, remember the song during the collection of the, the, the offerings and the tithes? The singer states so beautifully, I'm no longer a slave mm. to fear. Mm. Why? Because I'm a child of oh, God. Oh, God. Amen. Hey, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, we pray that the ons betal was, was dear. I tell you, if you don't understand and grasp what Jesus has went through for you and me, I tell you, he has claimed us as his own. He left the heavens and the earth. He left it so that he can reconcile mankind with God again up before us. That is what Jesus went through for you and for me. We can't allow fear to keep us away from God. We can't allow worry to keep us away from Jesus. Those things that is creating that worry and that fear, it must be left in the hands of Jesus. 
Pastor Alexander can come up here and he can quote scriptures for you how God in the past has performed miracles with the prophets. How can you know the Bible? We are the people of the book. You know, God has given us many examples when there was a difficult time for that individual. Yet God fought the battle for him or her then. And as he has done then, so God is willing to do for us in 2023. Amen. If you think things are going to get better in 2025, when Bill Gates comes with the second epidemic, which is called Sears, where things will even be worse than what it was in COVID-19, I tell you, brothers and sisters, many of us who have decided to walk with Jesus will turn our backs on God. Many of us. We will succumb. We will give in. We will turn our backs on this truth and this what Jesus has done. I tell those that will remain faithful, and I pray that everyone that's seated here this morning will remain faithful Amen. in spite of what might happen. One day, when the eastern skies will burst open, then I want to see my brother, my sister, and you should look to the other side. Where's Frankie? Where's Frankie? And I'll wait for you from the other side. I'll give you a free, free word. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Amen. I'm here. We need to know that God has given us the victory. Amen. And I claim that, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, we have victory in Jesus' name. Amen. The boss wants to fire you, let him fire you. We say, Lord, it is your will. Let your will be done. You know I need a uh, bread on the table. And Jesus, God will provide. Amen. We must just have faith and the belief and the trust. Don't let us be enslaved by the fears. You know what is the source of hurtful fears? Paul said he doesn't and it isn't God who gives us a spirit of fear. So he fear them doesn't come from God. That leaves only two alternatives this morning. It comes either from our own sinful nature or it comes from Satan's forces. Mm. You know what Satan? He loves getting God's people to fret and to fear and ultimately not trust in yeah. God. Mm. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Of fear. Amen. Even if it's sickness, mm. even if it's financial, even if it's whatever you are facing, do not fear. Amen. You have the victory Amen. in Jesus. Amen. 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 You know what? How does Satan use this spirit of fear against us? What he first do? He makes us miserable. Hmm. Making you a lousy advertisement for Christianity. Hmm. They look at you claiming to be a representative or an advocate for Jesus, but because you are enslaved by fear, what happens? You walk that sorry Christian. Somebody asked me this morning, brother, you, you always dress so nice on the Sabbath. I said, my sister, I give the best to Jesus. Amen. I give the best to Jesus because, and I keep my chin up high. You know, when I walk in a place, you see how I talk? I don't talk so. I don't talk so. I walk confidently and I talk confidently and I do this because I know who is with me. Amen. With Jesus with me, Jesus next to me, I need not worry. I said to my wife also the other day, if you want to leave me, you can go. Or you can take the house. But as long as Jesus is with me, because one day in the great judgment day, brothers and sisters, I will be me alone standing in front of God. And it is our responsibility to know that God says, I pay the ultimate price mm. for you. Don't be a lousy advertisement for Christ here on this earth. Amen. Stand up to yes. Keep your chin up high. Amen. Don't be shy to say, I am keeping the Saturday set. Mm. Don't compromise when the boss tells you it's time to work on Saturday overtime. You tell him in his face. The Bible declares, God demands of me to serve him first. Amen. I don't need that. Don't compromise, mm. brothers and sisters. I don't know. This message was given to me by God. 
You know what the Bible says? In 1 John 4 verse 18, it actually stated that fear has torment. Yes. It can, it keeps us there. Mm. That is what fear does, brothers and sisters. Romans 8 verse 14 speaks about the spirit of bondage against fear. We need not to fear in this day and age what Jesus, after what Jesus has done for us. I want to conclude with a story. There was this lady, rich lady, billionaire lady in America, had lots of money. But then there was a little sierki, I don't know what, I, I asked my wife what the sierki in English, but it's when you scratch it, there comes a little wound there. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? So. A sore. I remember Steve before the word so. <laughs> there was this little so on the lady's leg. And it started to itch. And it started to itch more. And as the itching comes, she scratched and scratched. And this little so where the pimple was, it became now a real big so. And eventually, long story short, long story short, they had to amputate a leg. So somebody asked her, uh, but, but, but ma'am, I don't understand, now why didn't you go to the hospital or to the doctor or before, you know when you saw there's a little circuit now there, and then why didn't you deal with it then? If you had money, you could have gone to the best specialist or doctors ever. Mm. Some people don't have that blessing that you have. And she said to this man who interviewed her, yes, you died. They said that uh, uh, a state bus valued at about a hundred million dollars, American US dollars. But she was scared to break the hundred million dollars. She was scared. She felt that if I break this now, I'm losing a lot. Yeah. And what the church? Mm. So she opted to rather scratch and hope that things will become better later. She died eventually. You know what the problem is? She has been clamored and caught and bonded with this evil thing which is called money. Mm. Brothers and sisters, if anything keeps us away from God, we must know that Satan is just a place where Satan wants us to be. Mm. Let us not be lousy advertisement for Christ. Lastly, Satan uses fear to immobilize us from action. I want to conclude by saying in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 8. My favorite verse. Paul states there finally. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, or are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, let us rather think on these things. Don't think about the worries. Don't think about the stress. <coughs> think about what Paul is giving us here in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 8. Let us contemplate and think about these things. Mm. At the end of the day, I tell you, church, once we are overcoming those challenges, we will be better Christians. Mm. And we will hasten the second coming of Christ mm. because we will get the work that must be done. done. Mm. And as long as we are enslaved there, we cannot wrap up and finish it. If there's anyone here this morning that is finding him or her in bondage or facing a challenge, I'm going to ask Pastor to come to the front. I want to do a special prayer for you. And as you want to recommit yourself and say, Lord, you know what is in my heart, what is preventing me from worshiping and serving you. We want to say, Lord, today we leave it at your heart. If there's anyone this morning, anyone, as the appeal has been made that I don't wish to be no longer a slave to fear.
or to my problem I'm facing. Why don't we stand and say, Lord, I'm leaving it. Let the altar is pastor. I'll do a dedicated prayer. May the Lord bless you as you listen to God's word. We arrive at fear because of jealousy. Mm -hmm. We arrive at fear because of dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. We arrive at fear because of a lack of love, yes. misunderstanding, mm -hmm. lack of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's why we arrive at fear, God. Mm -hmm. And so we ask that you would instill in our thinking mm -hmm. the opposite of that we may love, that we may respect, that we may learn to forgive, yes. that we may honor you, so that we embrace this lack of fear that Paul talks about in Timothy. We ask God that you will help us. You know each one of us. Yes. Heads bowed here to know you today, Lord. You know each one of us. You know what's going on in our minds. We arrive at fear because of bereavement. So God help us to get through our grief. And whatever else we need to do. And we know God that you've made us fearfully and wonderfully. We have the authority to bring about change. We have the ability to bring about change through changed thinking. Help us to think deeply of where we find ourselves now. And then to choose change. And we know that we don't do it alone because you promised the Holy Spirit to be with us until yes. the end of this age. Yes. So God, while you will do what is divinely necessary, help us to do what is humanly necessary and possible to bring about this change yes. so that the spirit of fear may be eradicated. Jesus. Help us to trust you. And Paul also speaks about being in Christ. And that is to have a relationship with you, with you, God, a relationship that is deep, a relationship that is personal, a relationship that is daily, a relationship that is reciprocal, Christ in you and us in, 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 in Christ. When we have this relationship, God, the fear will disappear mm. because we have chosen to be in you. Amen. May this be our experience, God, that <coughs> whatever 